back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jumoke. I'm your favorite femininity coach and women's mentor. Welcome back. If you like videos like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you can continue to get great content. So today, what are we talking about? We're gonna discuss five myths about femininity that you probably believe, all right? Five myths, so let's get it. So the first myth is femininity is cookie cutter. So this is a myth. And I know like a lot of women, they see femininity now, what it's becoming, and it's kind of this idealized type of woman, devoid of individuality, but that couldn't be further from the truth. You can have feminine, you can be a feminine woman and still have your personality, still have your own likes and your own desires. So femininity is not cookie cutter. Um, I know in some femininity spaces, they go into like different subsets of feminine women, like a siren and the, I don't want to get into all that just because some of it is a little bit ungodly, but yes, there are different types of, um, ways to express your femininity that is not necessarily going to look the same as the next woman. Okay. So the second myth that you probably believe is that femininity is the same thing as elegance. This one is a myth. So yes, I know some people are like, hmm, really? But femininity and elegance, they correlate, but they're not mutually inclusive of one another. So you can be ele you can be feminine, but not necessarily be elegant. Because elegance has more to do with high society, and it can um, just change from nation to nation. Like it, what's elegant in one country may not be what is elegant in another country. It has to do with a lot of classism, and social norms and social norms but it's not exactly going to be the same for every woman because not every woman is in high society or desires to be in high society now with that being said though here's the caveat i do think when it comes to femininity i think elegance does have a part to play i think if you are a feminine woman and the lord is calling you to be wealthy to be in front of masses, to be in front of um, very influential people, I do think you should study the art of elegance simply because that's where you're going. A lot of times when I mentor women, I ask them this question, I'm like, you know, if there was no way that you can fail, how much do you think that you will make in this lifetime? What's your net, net worth? A lot of them tell me, millionaire, Bill Gates status, da 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 da. And I said, all right, that's cute. Okay, so how do people who are millionaires in that, society how do they act how do they dress what do they wear where do they vacation where do they live and they can't answer me and i said yeah because you don't really believe it and i believe part of femininity when you are growing and understanding who you are and who the lord called you to be as a woman there is an element of preparation and that preparation is a form of belief and faith if you say i'm going to be a millionaire but you never even make a plan or a vision to what that looks like, then you really don't actually believe in it. I've never heard of a pregnant woman or a woman that's trying to conceive and have a baby just sit there and be like, yes, I'm gonna have a baby one day. But they're not looking up baby names, they're not <laughs> buying a crib, they're not buying formula, they're not buying diapers. So does that woman really believe that she's going to have a baby, even if she's pregnant at the moment, it's like, are you trying to convince me or yourself? So I do think when it comes to elegance, I think if you are someone who's called as a kingdom entrepreneur, if you're called as just um, someone who is meant to be famous, meant to be wealthy, break generational um, curses of poverty, build generational wealth, then I do think you should take some time and invest into understanding the art of elegance, okay? Number three, femininity is all about how to get a man. Not even how to get just any man, but a high caliber, high value man. Mm. So I'm gonna do a whole video about the difference between high value and high quality. I think language does matter, but I understand what is being said. It's just how to get a man. This is a myth. <laughs> this is a myth, all right? And this is something that I am very firm in. I believe that you are a feminine woman before a man and even enters the picture. You are a feminine woman for yourself and who you're called to be before a man is even mentioned. I think for a lot of us, we think that, oh, the man is the prize and how do I get a man? How do I get a man? How do I get a man? You can only attract what you put out. So 
if you are someone who has not healed from things like low self-esteem, worthlessness, rejection, and you haven't actually t taken time as yourself as a woman, especially mm, singleness, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you haven't actually taken the time to just um, really be a bit introspective about yourself, then it doesn't matter how much makeup and heels that you put on, you're still going to attract what you put in. So femininity is not about women, I mean, not about men at all. It's about who you're becoming as a woman. But with that being said, I always have these caveats. I do believe in being positioned for marriage. Um, I do believe that embracing your femininity positions you for marriage if you're called to marriage, but doesn't necessarily mean you're looking for a man, it's just you're positioning yourself as a feminine woman to receive a masculine man, okay? So next thing, number four, is femininity is behavior modification and changes people. Surprisingly, this is true. And I know some people, they kind of shy away from femininity because they're like, oh, you're trying to change me and the world's gonna get whatever I give it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, if you have this mentality, you have to understand and be a bit introspective. It's a bit prideful and it doesn't actually take others into consideration. So for example, let's talk about basic etiquette. Most people would agree that it's not, how do I say, it's a bit rude to pass gas or to burp you know, in public places. Not even saying excuse me, just like, oh, I had to fart, oh well, so I just did it. Like, we would be like, what? <laughs> and, and again, in your mind, you're like, well, that's what my body wanted to do, so I did it anyways. But you restraining yourself is part of self-control. And there's a lot of things in femininity that are not natural to us. I believe a big part of femininity is exhibiting the fruit of the spirit, which is love, patience, kindness, self-control, gentleness. Um, there's seven, there's nine. <laughs> there's nine fruit, but you get you get the point. I think a lot of these things come unnatural to us, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily changing us, it's just improving us. I'll give another example. Let's say if someone is talking and you just had a thought that came into your mind and your knee-jerk reaction might to be to say what comes to mind, but you're speaking over someone, you're not being polite, you're not taking the other person into consideration, it's just all about you. And again, naturally, you just may wanna say something so you don't forget a thought, but that's not polite. That is actually a bit rude. When it comes to femininity, femininity doesn't change your personality but it might make you more aware that certain things you thought were your personality is just a symptom of trauma. Maybe this is just a reflex that you have when it comes to trauma. And trauma comes in so many different forms. It doesn't have to be like really bad trauma. There's things like invisible trauma that you may have to heal from. Things like um, perfectionism, having a critical parent, even things like poverty. All these little, little things, you don't know how it affects you and it seeps into your everyday life. So yes, is femininity, is part of femininity um, about behavior modification? Definitely. Um, but even without femininity, there's a lot of things we do in society that is behavior modification. And lastly, number five, is femininity is misogynistic. So this is false. And a lot of people might think so, and I understand why. But if you understand femini femininity, especially from a godly perspective, you will see how different parts of femininity is actually protection for you as a woman. It's actually supposed to be so you and maybe even a man work together in harmony. Just Well, male and female, just in general in society, work together in harmony. It's not necessarily something that was supposed to be lorded over women. I do think there's parts of femininity that we are unknowingly accepting. Accepting is a bit patriarchal, which is why I keep saying femininity is not about what do I have to do to get a man? What hairstyle should I wear that a man likes? Blah, 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 blah. What do I have to do? How do I talk to get a man? Like that I feel like is a bit manipulative. Um, if you're doing things simply to just make someone like you, but that's not who you really are. And it can be a bit um, patriarchal. You know, if we're looking at femininity through the lens of what do men want and like and see from us, I really think we have to look at femininity through the lens of God and who does he call us as women 
to be. So that's it. Those are my five myths about femininity. I hope that you enjoy and definitely do let me know what you think about these points in the comment section. Let's have a discussion. Um, I'm so open for people just speaking their minds and getting their own revelation from whatever is being said. So definitely do make sure that you do leave a comment. And if you are a woman, that you are on this feminine journey and you are seeking to learn how to embrace your femininity, break generational curses, heal from soul wounds, and also potentially position yourself for marriage, definitely do book a discovery call with me. The link will be in the description box. So yes, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.